The Grand Canyon is a wonder. When you think National Park, that's the first that comes to mind. While this site might be one of the most intriguing places on Earth, we can't forget that it's also one of the most mysterious places. The Grand Canyon has long been a site of spiritual sights and ancient stories, with many of them still unexplained today. The rocks that make up the canyon's walls have been around for millions of years and contain secrets from an era we may never be able to fully understand. From the indigenous tribes who once used it as a home to the countless species of animals that live there, the Grand Canyon is truly a mystery like no other. And, well, it's gotten even crazier. There's been a recent discovery at the Grand Canyon and it's so insane that it's even got the scientists terrified. Join us as we get to the bottom of what this discovery was and how it could change everything. But before we do that, we have to get a little background. Starting with how important the Grand Canyon truly is. It's a part of history. For many Native American tribes, the canyon has been considered a sacred ground since time immemorial. Eleven distinct indigenous peoples have historically visited and lived in or around the area of the Grand Canyon, including Avasupai, Hopi, Paiute, Navajo, and Zuni people. The Grand Canyon is deeply ingrained in both their creation stories as well as their religious beliefs. For instance, the Avasupai, who have lived in and around the canyon for centuries, consider it to be a gateway to heaven or hell. The Colorado River at the base of the canyon has also long been a place of spiritual significance for many of this area's Native American tribes. According to cultural beliefs, it is a powerful place where people can go to wash away their troubles and burdens. The river has also served as a source of sustenance for many native peoples, providing food, water and transportation in addition to spiritual nourishment. The tribes that reside in the canyon and its surrounding areas have a deep connection with it. It has been part of their culture for centuries and still is today. The canyon has been featured in many of their stories, traditions and rituals. It remains an important part of their identity and is a source of spiritual nourishment for them. Visitors to the Grand Canyon should pay respect to this connection that has endured through generations. They should be aware of the long history and culture associated with the area when visiting. It is a place of awe-inspiring beauty and ancient cultural significance that should be respected and appreciated. The Grand Canyon is quite literally a part of history. With all the layers of sand and dirt, you peel things back all the way to hundreds of years ago. While Native American history might be one of the most important parts of the Grand Canyon, we can't overlook the fact that it's an integral part of US history as a whole too. The whole thing stands as a testament to American history and resilience, having gone through hundreds of years of change, both good and bad. For centuries, people have had their own plans for the canyon, from mining to hotel construction. However, with the intervention of then-President Teddy Roosevelt, the Grand Canyon was given protection and made a national monument in 1908. Thanks to the vision of President Roosevelt, his successors chose to preserve the canyon in its natural state. They removed existing hotels and structures on the rim of the canyon and set up protective regulations, officially making the Grand Canyon a national park in 1919. Today, the Grand Canyon stands tall as a symbol of the Western United States and is widely recognized as one of the seven wonders of the natural world by UNESCO's World Heritage Site program. It has also been declared an international biosphere reserve, recognizing its importance in the world's biodiversity. The Grand Canyon, with its magnificent views and untouched beauty, is an unforgettable sight to behold and it stands as a reminder of how far we've come in preserving our planet's most valuable assets. This isn't just a canyon that exists as a part of history though, it also gives. What does the Grand Canyon do for the people? The Grand Canyon's popularity isn't limited to just tourists from the United States. Visitors from all around the world flock to see one of nature's greatest spectacles in person 
attracted by its geological, archaeological and cultural attractions. In 2018, 29% of visitors to the Grand Canyon were international travelers, representing more than 1 million visitors in total. The economic impact these tourists have is significant. According to the National Park Service's economic benefits to local communities from National Park Visitation Report for 2018, visitor spending supported more than 11,000 jobs in the local area and had a cumulative benefit to the local economy of over $1.2 billion. The Havasupi people are one of the three tribes that own part of the Grand Canyon, and their tribal lands encompass the entire western portion of the canyon, including Supai Village, which lies eight miles below the rim and is accessible only by mule, helicopter or by foot. It's here that the Havasupai people offer guided tours and camping permits to tourists every year, with permits selling out in less than a week of going on sale. This brings in over $18 million each year in tourism revenue just from the camping permit fees alone. In addition to tourism, the Grand Canyon serves an important purpose for those who live near it by providing clean drinking water and recreational opportunities for millions of people. This includes the Avasupai, Wallapai and Navajo tribes that have called the canyon home for centuries. These tribes rely on tourism to help support themselves financially and preserve their culture through storytelling and crafts. Humans aren't the only ones benefiting from this geological marvel. It's the animals too. The Wildlife in the Grand Canyon The California condor is a remarkable bird and has a great story. In the early 20th century, their population dwindled to only 22 birds in total. Thankfully, with conservation efforts and successful reintroduction programs, they have been able to bounce back from the brink of extinction. The birds in the region are also a breathtaking sight to behold because of the fact that they're protected in the canyon as well as possible. These birds grow to be extremely healthy and live long lives. Most of them have an impressive wingspan up to 9 feet. Condor in the area were struggling to survive a few decades ago. Six condors were released into the Grand Canyon region with the start of the reintroduction program in 1983 and have seen great success. Considering they only started with six, it's insane to think about how the numbers have already made it to over 75. The American bison also found refuge in the Grand Canyon region. It's no secret that the bison used to roam in great numbers throughout North America, but their population quickly dwindled due to overhunting and loss of habitat. A herd was driven down from the north into the Grand Canyon area in the early 1900s and were able to find a safe haven there away from hunters. Thanks to little human interference, the bison were able to thrive and a population of around 500 can now be found on the North Rim. While the Grand Canyon might look like a bunch of rock formations, it's clear that it's a lot bigger than that. Even the formations themselves are a mystery that geologists have been studying for decades, trying to figure out the deeper wonders and secrets of the place. The Grand Canyon isn't your average canyon. How was it even created? The Grand Canyon was formed over millions of years by the erosive forces of the Colorado River. The river carved through layers of sedimentary rock to create the canyon's steep walls and winding pathways. Scientists believe that the process began about 5 million years ago when a natural dam filled with sediment created a lake in what is now northern Arizona. As the lake drained away, the Colorado River gradually cut deeper and wider, forming the canyon as we know today. Over the course of time, wind and water have also played an important role in creating side canyons, gullies and other features that make up this remarkable landscape. The Grand Canyon's history is still being unraveled, but it's clear that its beauty is the result of a very long and complex process. Centuries of history is hidden in those rock formations, and in the past few years, that history has been coming to light. Ancient Animals Uncovered in the Grand Canyon While there are lots of animals in the Grand Canyon, the one that really shocked everyone 
Steve Rowland and his team of researchers were stunned to find fossilized footprints near a popular hiking trail, which they estimated were 313 million years old. It is believed that the tracks are from one four-legged animal with a lateral sequence walk, making it the oldest evidence of vertebrate animals walking on sand dunes. This sparked much speculation among the scientific community as to what type of animal left these tracks and what it looked like. Mark Nebel, paleontology program manager of the Grand Canyon, said that some of the conclusions are likely to be controversial. The mystery deepened when it was discovered that similar tracks elsewhere were mostly found in coal beds, not sand dunes. This led some researchers to believe that the footprints could mark the point in evolution where animals were able to lay eggs with protective shells outside of water. The rock itself fell from the Manacacha Formation and is made up of sandstone, limestone and mudstone, which indicates that it was once a coastal path on the western edge of the supercontinent, Pangaea. This means the dinosaurs were not around yet at that time, so it's likely that this animal predated dinosaurs themselves. Now officials at the Grand Canyon are trying to decide what to do with the rock since it is in plain view along the Bright Angel Trail and weighs hundreds of pounds. Another part of the rock also has footprints, but it wasn't studied extensively. Roland and his team would like to find more tracks of the same animals in order to acquire more data. But for now, the footprints will remain a mysterious part of history at the Grand Canyon. The hypotheses that have been presented about these tracks shows that science is never stagnant and always evolves with new discoveries. It's thrilling to think about how many other animals and stories are hidden in the rocks of the Grand Canyon. Signs of the earliest humans in the Grand Canyon Researchers have always had a set idea of when humans were first found on Earth, but a new discovery about humans has shaken the world of science recently. Footprints from an era we didn't even think humans were in America in. The footprints spotted at White Sands Natural Park have been described as a major discovery with implications that go far beyond the simple tracking of ancient movements. This historic find could indicate a much earlier human presence in both North and South America than had previously been assumed. Some archaeologists believe that this discovery may be evidence of the earliest humans to venture into the New World, suggesting that humans were living in the area as early as 23,000 years ago. This is significantly earlier than the accepted consensus of 13,000 years ago. The find at White Sands has been met with both excitement and controversy amongst researchers and archaeologists. While the discovery is not enough to definitively close the debate on the timing of human presence in the Americas, it certainly adds fuel to the fire. Cyprian Ardeline, an archaeologist with the Autonomous University of Zacatecas, has even gone so far as to describe this find as the holy grail of anthropology and archaeology. His research at Mexico's Chiquiweed Cave supports the theory that humans were present in North America as early as 30,000 years ago. The footprints found at White Sands National Park may be the first tangible evidence of a much earlier human presence in the Americas than previously thought, but that's not all they found. The case of the disappearing and reappearing dead bodies in the Grand Canyon. A Hungarian-Korean man had gone missing from Las Vegas in July 2021, with his car being discovered parked at the Grand Canyon shortly afterward in mid-August. After an extensive search, his body was found 131 meters below the rim of the canyon. This was a shock to all involved in the search, but what shocked them even more was when they discovered another body nearby, that of Scott Walsh, a man who had gone missing back in 2015 after getting off a shuttle bus at the south rim of the park. His remains were almost impossible to spot due to the expert camouflage of his clothing. It wasn't until an aerial search for the Hungarian-Korean man that Scott's body was finally located 4.8 kilometers from where his day pack had been found six years ago. 
No one really knew why the authorities couldn't find the bodies earlier on, but then a discovery thawed everything. The Grand Canyon is often referred to as a layer cake of geological history, with its rock formations stacked neatly as they have been for millions of years. However, deep within the canyon lies a huge gap between these rocks that have kept many secrets hidden away from human eyes. Recent discoveries have now started to shine a light on this mysterious space, uncovering clues and hints that could explain why there are sometimes things in the Grand Canyon that we just can't see. The Missing Billion Years in the Grand Canyon When we look around the Grand Canyon, it's hard to imagine that this beautiful tourist destination has a billion years of history. But researchers recently used an innovative method called thermochronology, which tracks the history of heat in stone, to explore the planet's transition from an older setting to Earth as we know it today. These researchers took samples of rock from throughout the Grand Canyon before discovering that its history was more complex than anyone had assumed. In particular, they discovered that the western and eastern halves of the canyon may have undergone different geologic contortions throughout time. This difference is believed to be linked to the breakup of Rodinia, a gigantic landmass that started to split up some 700 million years ago. The researchers concluded that the fractioning of Rodinia may have impacted the eastern and western halves of the Grand Canyon in different ways, resulting in what we now call the Great Unconformity. The mysterious Great Unconformity has puzzled geologists since it was first described nearly 150 years ago. This unique erosion surface is found all over the globe, but is most prominently visible at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, where 500 million year old Paleozoic Tapeat sandstone is directly layered on top of 1.4 to 1.8 billion year old Protozoic Vishnu Schist creating a mysterious gap in Earth's rock record of up to a billion years long. Now researchers from the University of Colorado Boulder believe they may be getting closer to an explanation in a study recently published in the Journal of Geology. The team suggests that the gap in Earth's rock record may be due to a series of earthquakes that rocked the region during the breakup of an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia. The powerful seismic events would have caused rocks and sediment to wash away into the ocean, creating this missing time period in geological history. The new research provides further insight into the history of the Grand Canyon, one of North America's most iconic natural wonders. By studying its layers of rock and sediment, scientists can gain a better understanding of Earth's past, a journey that begins with the Great Unconformity itself. No matter how far we go, that's the one question we all have to come back to. That has to be the starting point of it all. Indeed, lead author Barra Peak describes the Grand Canyon as a history textbook, allowing us to explore the depths of time and uncover secrets that have been hidden away for billions of years. With this latest study, we may be one step closer to understanding the complex events that shaped our planet and its inhabitants. Rebecca Flowers, the co-author of the study and a professor of geological sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder, believes that new analytical methods used in their laboratory have enabled them to better understand the missing window of time across the Great Unconformity. From what the evidence suggests, there's a chance that the rocks haven't just disappeared, they're moving. Could these rocks be moving up and away? If so, it could explain why the bodies of the two men were nowhere near where they were found in the canyon. Could the rocks have taken them away and later exhumed them? We're just at the very surface of figuring out the secrets and mysteries of the Grand Canyon. There are hundreds, if not thousands of unanswered questions about the region. What else could the Grand Canyon be hiding? We're just going to have to wait a little longer for the researchers to get through the information to find out. And on that note, we'll wrap up today's video. What do you think happened to the missing billion years of rocks in the Grand Canyon? Let us know in the comments below.